The lat pull down is a phenomenal lat building exercise. It has a few benefits over pull ups. Now, there's nothing wrong with pull ups, but pull downs are usable by nearly anyone. They're more flexible in terms of rep ranges, they're a little bit less fatiguing, and more. Here's how to optimize your lat pull down technique to build bigger lats. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science, teaching you how to improve your lat pull down technique to finally build some lats. Before I give you the best technique on lat pull downs, let me break down some common mistakes that I see a lot of people make when it comes to pull downs. There are a few important components of technique for building muscle. Here's what they are. Based on the scientific evidence, there are three or four components to good hypertrophy technique. And when it comes to each different component of technique, there are people out there making these mistakes. First off, a good tempo. There is likely such a thing as going too fast, but also such a thing as going too slow for your repetitions. Both a meta-analysis by Schoenfeld and colleagues and another systematic review performed recently found broadly the same conclusions. If your repetitions take much less than about two seconds or much more than about eight seconds per rep, you're likely reducing hypertrophy. Additionally, some more preliminary evidence suggests that if you want to maximize muscle growth, we probably want to control the lowering phase or the eccentric phase to a decent extent, taking around one to two seconds at least for the eccentric phase. And additionally, when it comes to the lifting phase or the concentric phase of any exercise, we likely want to perform that a bit more explosively. The evidence for these recommendations is a bit more limited, but it's worth keeping in mind. And that's where the first few common mistakes come in. I've trained with Kyriakos Grizzly before, and I've got all the love in the world for him. But his technique on pulldowns, not great. Do not grizzly your pulldowns for maximum muscle growth. Instead, control the weight up for about two seconds and be explosive on the way down. Likewise, one mistake I see made less frequently, but still occasionally, is one, taking way too long per rep, say taking over eight seconds, but more specifically, pausing in that bottom position. As we'll get to in a moment, that is what we want to avoid. Your tempo should have you spending more time in that lengthened position, in all likelihood, and less time in that shortened position. There's no direct studies looking at this, but based on the research I'm about to mention, that is likely a good idea. So if I see you pausing at the bottom of your pulldown when you're already struggling to reach your chest, I'm gonna have a bad time. I'm going to cry. And that brings me to my second point. When it comes to range of motion, which is another big component of technique, and perhaps the one we have the most evidence on, one thing we don't want to do is to skip out on the stretched position. In the exercises we perform, that stretched position is likely more important than that shortened position where you're getting that peak squeeze or peak contraction. And so going back to the tempo, if you're pausing at the bottom in that peak contraction position, that then thereby reduces how much time you're spending in that more beneficial stretch position. While there's no direct research on lat growth or even the lat pull down as far as technique goes, this principle of lengthened training being beneficial for muscle growth does appear to be generalizable across different muscle groups. And this research is especially interesting when it comes to exercises like the pull down or even any sort of pull up variation or any sort of rowing variation. In all of these exercises, the lift tends to be most difficult when you get into that fully shortened position. If we were to use length and partials or essentially cut out that fully shortened, most difficult position and lift, we'd be able to use a lot more weight and make that lengthened stretch position more stimulative. And so theoretically, even though we don't have direct evidence in the back, muscles like the back or the side delts, where you typically don't experience much tension in that stretch position, might be the best place for you to use length and partials in the first place. As a good heuristic, in fact, if on a given movement, you're able to use a lot more weight by doing length and partials versus a full range of motion, that might theoretically be where length and partials are most beneficial. But regardless, you don't want to miss the stretch position. If you're doing full range of motion reps, make sure you get a full stretch and bring the bar down to your upper chest. If you're doing length and partials, just bring the bar down to about the top of your head. Now, let's say you don't like just doing length and partials. Fortunately, there might be an alternative. And in fact, the infamous Sam Sulik is one example of this. When he's doing lat pulldowns, he does full range of motion reps, or at least full range of motion-ish. And then when he can't get another full rep, he instead just does the top half, the easier half of the movement, where the lats are actually more stretched out. So he's doing lengthened partials after hitting full range of motion failure. I call this concept lengthened supersets. And as it turns out, just this week at the time of recording this, we are publishing the first ever study looking at muscle growth 
from doing lengthened supersets. In the calves, when comparing doing lengthened supersets to just doing a full range of motion set, we observed around 50% more muscle growth when doing lengthened supersets. And so, while there's only one study on this compared to all the studies on lengthened training in general, there does seem to be a benefit to doing those partials after failure. So, if you prefer getting those partials in after you hit failure, that might be a fine way to apply this research as well. This research also allows me to myth bust a couple things. One, that you always want to use a wide grip for the lats. In fact, it might be the opposite. The narrower the grip, to an extent, the more of a stretch you'll typically get on your lats. So a somewhat narrower grip, like around shoulder width or narrower, will likely be better when it comes to targeting the lats and getting more of a stretch on them in the top position. Likewise, people like to poo-poo on the V-grip when it comes to pull-downs. While indeed the V-grip doesn't allow you to get that peak contraction quite as well as just using a straight bar, it allows you to get as good of a stretch or maybe even a slightly better stretch. And so the V-grip is just fine. And that brings me to another mistake people often make, and that's not getting a full stretch when doing a lat pull-down. Either it's because they're not really paying attention and they're just kind of going until it feels about right and their elbows are mostly extended except they're really not and they're curtailing the stretch on the lats, or it's because they're simply using the wrong machine or setting up the wrong way. As a bit of a tall individual myself, around 6'2 and around 220 to 240 depending on the time, I relate to this. Certain machines just don't give me a good stretch. So pick the right machine. Or in fact, if you can't find a good machine, consider just using a cable and doing them single arm. If you sit on the ground, you'll get all the stretch you could need. Another common mistake I see people make is depending on the machine, they actually let the weight rest on the stack at the very top of each rep in that deep stretch position. This is exactly the position where we don't want to relieve tension off the muscle. So when you're at the very top of the rep, do not let the stack rest. Instead, control it the whole time. And one other final claim I want to myth bust a little bit. And that's the idea that underhand pulldowns are going to be way better than overhand pulldowns for bicep growth. The truth is, I don't think it makes a huge difference. But if I wanted to theorize a little bit, I would actually argue the opposite. An overhand grip would further lengthen the biceps, given that the biceps assist in supination, pronating the hand as you would during an overhand pulldown would actually further lengthen them. And based on the research I'm mentioning now, that would probably be better for hypertrophy. So overhand pulldowns might be slightly better for bicep hypertrophy, all else being equal. Next up, another component of good technique is that we want to target muscle to be as close to failure as possible. AKA, we want it to be the limiting factor in your performance. That means minimizing body English and the involvement of non-target muscle groups. The closer to failure we take a given muscle group, the more growth it tends to experience from a given set. Those are the findings from meta-regression by Robinson and colleagues from a couple years ago. In the case of the pull-down, there's going to be a few different muscle groups being trained pretty effectively, to be honest. There's going to be the lats, the teres major, the rear delts, the biceps, and in fact, the only study we have on the pull-down actually measuring muscle growth found the following. When comparing the pull-down to a supinated dumbbell curl, we observed similar bicep growth from these two exercises. And so the pull-down seems to be a pretty good choice when it comes to growing your biceps. And in fact, based on another study where we compared underhand dumbbell rows to dumbbell curls, where we saw less hypertrophy of the biceps from the rows, it seems like all else being equal, potentially, pull-downs or vertical pulling are going to be better for your biceps compared to rowing or horizontal pulling exercises. As far as body English goes, this brings me to a couple of common mistakes on the pull-down. First, do not crunch down at the bottom as a means to get the bar closer to you. It's very common as the set gets difficult for me to see trainees crunch down as a means to pretend they got the bar further down than they were really able to. Sometimes they didn't even re-extend their chest to touch the chest to the bar. Spoiler, fucko, if you want to train your abs, do it somewhere else. Another mistake is to kind of lean back a ton, turn it into a weird row variation, or sometimes even just lean back a ton and then come back forward to pretend you actually lifted the weight properly. If you want to do rows, please go to rows. And finally, the fourth component of good technique based on my experience as a coach and as a lifter myself is preference and pain management. Here's the deal. If your technique allows you to hit the above boxes of range of motion, tempo, and minimizing cheating and maximizing involvement of the target muscle very effectively, but a certain technique feels nicer to you, like slowing down the eccentric from two to four seconds allows you to feel it in your back a bit more. If that's the case, feel free to do it. While there are definitely things we want to do to maximize hypertrophy in terms of technique, there's more wiggle room than you might expect. There is no true one size fits all in terms of technique. Likewise, some people experience pain when doing the pull down in a certain way. For instance, my good friend Dr. Pack gets some elbow pain whenever he does underhand pull downs. And so for him, he can just do overhand pull downs. By and large, they are interchangeable. So if one technique causes you substantially less pain, 
allows you to train closer to failure with more volume without feeling as much pain, go do it. Now that I've broken down the science on technique and common mistakes I see being made, here's instead how to optimize your lat pull down technique to maximize lat growth. Use whatever grip you prefer, overhand, neutral, underhand, it doesn't matter. It's mostly personal preference. For bicep growth, overhand might be slightly better, and in general, a relatively narrow grip is likely best. I personally recommend setting the thigh pad as low as possible to maximize the feeling of being locked in. I just feel this allows me to pull a little bit harder. Likewise, consider going on your tippy toes to push your knees into the pad to feel even more locked in. Before starting the set, let your shoulder blades come all the way up and extend your arms fully. Explosively pull the bar or attachment down until either the top of your head for partials or all the way to your upper chest for a full range of motion. Control the weight back up, taking at least around two seconds or potentially even more. When you've reached top position, let everything extend and elevate without letting the weight rest on the stack and pause briefly for about half a second to a second. Repeat this until you've done all the reps for the set. Where you breathe throughout the set is up to you. I like breathing in and out on the way up and brace on the way down, but it's mostly personal preference. Optionally, if you're doing a full range of motion set, but you'd like to experiment with length and supersets, once you're pretty close to failure or you can't get another full rep touching the bar to your upper chest, keep going until you can't get another length and partial or even bring the bar down to just the top of your head. Let's go through the technique checklist and make sure that I've given you effective pointers based on the scientific evidence. We're getting at least a two second eccentric in, being a bit more controlled on the eccentric phase and a bit more explosive on the concentric phase. Furthermore, we're pausing in the stretch position as a means to accentuate the benefit of the stretch a bit more. As far as range of motion goes, we're making sure we don't skimp on the stretch. That means one, letting your arms extend fully and letting your scapula elevate on the way up, using a relatively narrower grip as a means to stretch out the lats a bit more, potentially doing partials after you've hit failure as a lengthened superset, or even just doing lengthened partials. Since the pull down doesn't load that stretch position all that well, using these tools can allow you to effectively target it a little bit more. We're also making sure to use a machine that allows you to get a full stretch. If you're tall or you don't have a nice pull down machine available, that might mean sitting on the ground with a cable pulley in order to get a full stretch. And finally, as far as momentum goes or involving non-target muscle groups, we're one, avoiding crunching up the spine as it means to bring the bar down and randomly involving our abs. And we're also avoiding turning it into a row by leaning back excessively. So while you might not be a sports scientist yourself, I hope you can see how that makes it good for hypertrophy. Dr. Milo Wolf just broke down optimal technique on the lat pull down for growing your lats. If you enjoyed the video, Please leave a like, comment what other exercises you want to see me break down, and subscribe. I know like half of you aren't, so please do. Listen, the sign is still broken, so you're going to have to bear with me shilling for a moment. The best training app on the market is coming soon, and that's MyoAdapt. We're aiming for it to be like a coach in your pocket, using all of the latest scientific research to give you an individualized training program based on your preferences for a certain routine, based on what muscle groups you want to specialize on, based on what equipment you have available, based on how much time you have to train, and a million other things. I'm confident in saying there's nothing else like it out there. Go to myodapp.com and sign up to the email newsletter to be notified when it gets released. Once it comes out, by signing up to the email newsletter, you'll be able to lock in at a lower price than any other time. I hear you saying, that's a nice lilac t-shirt, I guess. I'm not a color scientist, apologies. But this is a nice t-shirt. I got it from rascalapparel.com. And to be honest, it is my favorite training clothing. So if you like what you're seeing, go check out rascalapparel.com. And to support me, use code WOLF at checkout for 10% off. And finally, if you'd like me to coach you and take care of all of your training, give you feedback on your technique, then check out the link above and I could become your coach. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and we'll see you next time from WOLF Coaching. Peace.